Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. It is super cold outside. It's like five degrees with wind, so it's way below zero. So I heated up the greenhouse a little bit with the torpedo heater. Today, I'm going to scarify, stratify, or actually scarify, inoculate, and stratify some seeds. These seeds here are all are already started in the stratification process. Well, actually they all are started in the stratification process by just by being in the fridge. These are all stored in the fridge. But these particular ones need cold, moist stratification which means that the seeds need to be cold and moist for a certain amount of time before you plant them. And what that does is it mimics nature. Um, they, need, they need that cold period in order to get the signal that they can sprout. Some seeds need to be cold and moist. There's a whole bunch of different ways that seeds need to be stratified, but None of the seeds that I have are anything very complicated. The majority of them are just cold and moist. So what I have here is vermiculite, dampened vermiculite with the seeds dropped into it. And then they are put in the fridge on the top shelf for a certain amount of time. I have a stratification schedule, which I was going to print out and bring out here. But each one of these wants to be moist stratified or moist cold stratified for a certain amount of time. Some of them were put in there in, oh, I think December. Some needed three months, some needed two months, some need one month. The one I'm doing today only needs 10 days. We will be planting here in 10 days. I have some more stuff for the set up here if i can find it i went shopping yesterday and i already cannot find the rope that i got for this to hang this i do have the rest of what i need i just got the correct timers uh the other ones that i had only turned only went on for a certain amount of time these have the lights need to be on 16 hours a day when i start doing the germination or germination and sprouting okay so let's get started um let me open this bag up okay some of these or i should say none of these here require moist stratification they're just stored in the in the fridge until it's time to plant them some, when you plant them, they require to be planted right at the top of the soil. They can't be covered. They need light, uh, which is why having that uh, nice light on that is so important. Not only does the light provide the light, it provides heat as well. And by the time I plant, that is 10 days away, it was minus 12 last night. And we can get weather like that again you know, after these are planted. So I have another timer as well that runs on a thermostat that will turn on either a fan if it gets too hot or a, a heater if it gets too cold. And I'm gonna be using that in the germination chamber and then I'll be using it in the room in general for this, uh, circulation fan and a, a heater while they're still young okay this is the one in question um this is wild lupine this requires this is a legume so it requires a inoculant so let's get started on this and i'll show you how to do that yeah it's pretty nasty out there 
This is lupinus perennis, which means uh, perennial lupine, and scarified no. So that means it needs to be scarified. This company, Prairie Moon Nursery, has a stratification schedule and where is it? Uh, germination code C H I. I, one of them means scarification. 10 days cold. Um, I forget what the hell the rest means. It's it's on their website, though. So, here is the inoculum. This doesn't look like it's... Yeah, it's not even sealed. Um, this is a bacteria. So, what this has to be, once it's scarified which I'm going to do with sandpaper once. Let's take a look at the seed. Kind of look like peas or something. Oh, they look like sesame seeds, larger sesame seeds. I don't know if this is focusing or not. The, the scarification process, what it does is this type of seed is very, very hard. It has a hard coat on it. That hard coat lets it survive in the stomach of a bird. Sorry about that. We've got a lot of wind out there. That hard coat lets it survive through the digestion process of some animal. And when it's pooped out somewhere, then it will start to grow. And it will have some fertilizer right there to grow in. So that's its strategy for survival, and it, th this stops any new plants from growing around the mother plant as well, because if they just drop off, they still have that hard coat on, and it would take, you know, a good deal of soaking or something to, to soften it up enough so that it could sprout. So scarification is, well, it can be done several different ways, but on these... The recommendation is sandpaper, and you just rub it between two pieces of sandpaper. And what you're trying to do is break the um, sand through that hard shell, but not so far that you damage the embryo. And the embryo is usually a little white you're usually able to tell where the embryo is, but some seeds you can't. On this side, it's on the pointy end. That's it right there. It's usually white. And that is the actual plant. The rest of the seed is just food for the plant. So this is going to be a bit difficult to do on this. I'm going to get a little plastic plate with sides on it just in case they roll off of here and I'm probably gonna need a stool as well so let me get that stuff and continue hopefully this uh, this wind was just blowing up a storm a, a couple seconds ago and I had to I had to wait for that so hopefully it's not gonna get too loud it comes and it goes, so I may have to pause here. So I had to put some back because I can't get enough on here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is put this over the top. Do some scratching. I do not like this method of scarification as well as others, but for larger seed you can use uh, an X-Acto knife and just put a little nick into it. That way you know you're going to get 
uh, you know it's going to work and you can put it right in the exact spot you want it. I can see that some of the shell is coming off so it's going to work but how well I don't know this is plenty of seed I'm doing oh what is it three six maybe seven hundred feet of roadside but this year I'm not sure how many how many lupine I will need I'll probably have to put some more in next year but I can get some seed off the ones that I'm growing this year. Mostly these are going in by the little blue stem grass that was planted last year. You could see that stuff on the videos from last year, from 2018. The little blue stem is doing wonderful. Okay, that's the first batch. Yeah, that's about the same amount. It's quite a few seeds. I, I definitely don't need that many plants. Um, I'll sprout these in a tray and pull the, pull the little sprouts up, germinate them in a tray and pull the viable ones out and I'll probably I probably only need about 30 of them, but we'll see. Some of these are definitely not viable, they're just disintegrating. Yeah, sorry for that noise, but that's... We just have terrible weather for the next four days sunshine but very cold and very windy today we have 13 mile an hour gust so it's i don't know what the wind chill is but it's very very cold out there Okay, that should be good enough. I have never grown this particular plant before, so I'm not sure their particulars. Other stuff like, oh, do we have some here? Uh, here we go. Uh, purple milkweed. This requires cold stratification, but I have grown this without cold stratification so it's um, most seeds will grow either way this just allows you or will give you a better success ratio success to failure ratio now what I gotta do is to get these moistened and I'm just, just gonna dump them in the dump them in the water and I'm going to get rid of the floaters, I think. I 
do believe that holds true with these seeds as well, that the floaters are not going to be viable anyways. Some of, the, some of them will just get it like an air pocket. Yeah, it looks like they're mostly, mostly going to be good. I should have used a smaller little bowl. Okay, I'll just get my vermiculite ready. I just have coarse grade vermiculite. I don't know if you can see that or not. But you can get this stuff at Menards or at any nursery. Or most nurseries. We'll just put a fair amount of vermiculite in there and add some water and the water the moistness will help stratify the seeds And the scarification will help to allow them to burst out of their shell when they do start germinating. Okay, now I'm going to put this inoculum, which is a bacteria. Okay, that is sealed. It is a bacteria that works symbiotically with the legume and it uh, creates the nitrogen fixing nodules on their roots. So without the inoculum, the inoculum is in the soil pretty much everywhere, but in varying varying amounts so if you just plant the seed you might get a nodule or two on your roots you might get a whole bunch of them it all depends on the, the area and if you had inoculation before see I've had to inoculate several I think what was it? Crown vetch and oh, there were several things I've inoculated before. So we definitely have the inoculum in fair quantities in the soil around here, and they grow. Uh, they grow soybeans. They grow soybeans around here, and soybeans. Soybeans, uh, a lot of times soybeans are inoculated, so. Okay, the seeds are now coated with the inoculum. Now I'm going to dump the seeds in uh, vermiculite. Easier, easier said than done. I probably should have just dumped the vermiculite in with the seeds. Big dummy. But this will work eventually. Okay. And you can use dampened toweling and just put the seeds on that and I have done it that way but this is the way a lot of nurseries recommend this so I'm going to give this a shot I've never done it in vermiculite before I've always done my stratification cold stratification in paper toweling which you can see the 
the single seeds when they sprout. You can see their little root coming out, so you can just take them with a tweezers and pop them right into the soil. Um, this will be a different story. I'm not not a hundred percent sure how I'll go about this, but you will be able to see the little tails come out of the seeds, so it shouldn't be much different than the other method. Okay, and then. The last step, besides germinating these, is to just tape the tape the packet to the bag, like like the other ones, and put it back in the in the fridge. Now this has a 10-day stratification, so this this is the very last one that I'm stratifying, and in 10 days all of these will come out and be planted. I don't have to plant these right away. This, this is, uh, these are grasses. Um, these are just being stored in the fridge because that's where you store seed. Um, these will likely be planted as seed. These will be planted in pots and they will be uh, live plants when they're put in the ground. Okay, that'll be it for the last stratification, scarification, stratification, and inoculation in the case of that one. So that is on a 10-day schedule. In 10 days, this will be hung from the top. It's going to be hung, I believe it's two feet above the base part that's going to be on here then all the heating mats will go on there well it'll go on here all the uh, 1020s which are the seedling um, racks will be on top of that and I will be planting all the seeds so it should be pretty interesting this next week all this next week and a half I got to get this thing up which is no big deal it's just it's just a couple ropes and lift it up the light itself is ready to go it already has you know all the hardware it needs it and it just hangs from hooks from here so everything really just needs to be uh, put in place some stuff needs to be screwed down and then I just got to run extension cords and whatever is needed and test it out once this hood is raised up to here or so I am going to put plastic sides on it to retain the heat I'll have to monitor it really well because like I said we could have some really nasty cold days um, between now and actual good weather so if worse comes to worst it's what is it five flats are going on here one two three four five six flats i believe if worse comes to worst i can bring them indoors if we're going to get a super cold night but i think it should be plenty warm the way it is you know with two inch insulation and heating mats underneath them and the light above them so i think they'll be fine so stop back often and watch progress. Make sure you subscribe and click on updates so you receive notice when I post the new videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.